I'm Peter Dubois and I'm Beth Jones. First tonight, state lawmakers took an initial vote today on a bipartisan bill that seeks to change the way cannabis gummies are labeled. Our Augusta reporter Corey Bouchard has more on what changes may be coming. Now, what we saw today was um, my colleagues in both the Republican and Democratic parties uh, acknowledging this and we had a strong over two thirds vote to uh, move this forward and, and let these folks bring their products to market in a, in a safe way. Representative David Boyer of Poland sponsored LD 2147, which seeks to change the way cannabis infused gummies are labeled by removing the current requirement that each individual gummy be stamped or embossed with a universal symbol for THC. Because what we were finding in the industry is, is a very um, haphazardly applied and perhaps inequitably applied standard, mostly because it's a subjective standard. It's, you look at a piece of candy and depending on the light and depending on the other environmental factors and depending maybe on the inspector's mood, it passes one day and then maybe it doesn't pass the next day. The bill passed the House by a vote of 102 to 36, passing the two-thirds majority requirement under an emergency bill. Uh, grateful for the strong vote from the Maine legislature today in support of Maine small businesses and uh, common sense and protecting public health and safety. Susan Meehan, the president of the Maine Cannabis Union, says safety was always top of mind during discussions of this bill. This is so important to us because it maintains the child safety features of our packaging. It maintains the tamper-proof packaging. It maintains the child resistance packaging. And it maintains the symbol and the other labeling requirements on the label. The Senate is scheduled to vote on the bill Tuesday. At the State House, I'm Corey Bouchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Governor Mills unveiled a change package for her supplemental budget that allocates over $100 million for investments in housing, child care, and nursing homes. The proposal would fund a number of initiatives, including $22 million in one-time funding to create more than 150 new housing units in Maine, with some additional funds to support purchases of mobile home parks by their residents. It also includes $12 million for one-time relief grants for child care providers, $23 million to support nursing facility reform, and $17.5 million for the Maine Emergency Management Agency for storm recovery. The supplemental budget, including the change package, is currently being worked on in the Appropriations Committee and would need to be voted on by the full legislature before the session ends on April 17th. And as you just heard, Governor Mills says she wants to help people who live in mobile homes around the state. And her latest budget proposal includes a fund to help those residents buy their park communities when they worry about new owners raising their rent. Owen Kingsley has more from Old Orchard Beach, where one community is going through a similar situation. Last month, we shared the efforts by some residents here at Old Orchard Village to buy their mobile home park after it was sold earlier this year. Well, now they've made an offer, and this comes as the governor's latest budget proposal comes with an idea that would help communities like this one. Most of them are excited about the fact that we may just be able to take care of our rent and uh, the whole park. The majority of residents at Old Orchard Village have formed Seacoast Village Cooperative and say they've matched the other buyer's $40 million offer. The company that's selling the park wrote in a letter to residents last month that the new buyers have a good reputation and only increase rents modestly. There wasn't really a whole lot of specifics in that letter to reassure people. While they wait for a response, Governor Mills has included $5 million in her latest budget to help people like these folks in Old Orchard Beach who want to purchase their parks. Republican Representative Ed Polowarczyk supports the governor's idea. Trying to develop a market analysis and trying to make a reasonable offer when you're competing with other, other buyers is not a simple thing to go to. If we can help them, with some subsequent legislation, we'll take the summer off and, and spend some time trying to develop legislation that will, will help them. Seacoast Village Cooperative still hopes they may be eligible for state and federal funding, but hope if this proposal passes, it can help others too. I'm just hoping that they realize that there's help out there. If part of that $5 million is going to help, then, you know, go for it. Seacoast Village Cooperative expects to find out by Friday if Old Orchard Village will accept the offer. 
And that was Owen Kingsley reporting. In other news tonight, a Palmyra woman died after being hit by a vehicle on Saturday. It happened just after 7.30 p.m. Somerset County Chief Deputy Michael Mitchell says 45-year-old Heather Corey was crossing Route 2 from the Walmart parking lot towards the Dollar General when she was struck by a van driven by 80-year-old Gerald Heskett of Palmyra. Deputy Mitchell says Corey was taken to a local hospital where she was pronounced dead. Heskett wasn't injured in the crash. The incident remains under investigation, but Deputy Mitchell says speed and alcohol are not considered factors. To a major development now in the case of a missing Wyndham man, police now believe he was murdered and they've charged a man from Leeds with the crime. Police say the body of Alex Jackson, who was 33 at the time of his disappearance, still hasn't been recovered. Mal Meyer explains that there are still a lot of questions about why there are charges now. All right. 30 year old Joseph Shute appeared remotely from jail in Androscoggin County, only answering a few questions from the judge. Yes, it is, Your Shute, wearing an orange jail jumpsuit, showed no reaction as the charges against him were read. I have two matters here involving State of Maine versus Joseph Shute. Shute is accused of intentionally or knowingly murdering Alex Jackson on May 12th of last year. Jackson's family previously told us that's when he drove from Wyndham to Leeds in his truck with a flatbed trailer. We got up to his friend's house. Calls to Jackson went unanswered, one of the reasons why they became so concerned. It's not like him to go this long without his phone. His phone doesn't go far from him. He normally is calling me five, six times a day, sometimes more. Jackson's loved ones searched high and low for him and even created a Facebook page for updates about his case. His dog Hazel was found in North Yarmouth a few days after he vanished, only adding to the mystery. It's just so bizarre because he's not one that doesn't come home. Jackson's sister and girlfriend were in court today but declined to comment. Shoot did not have to enter a plea for the murder charge court paperwork that could have explained why and where an arrest was made on Friday in Leeds is temporarily being kept from public view. Shoot is being held without bail pending another hearing. In the meantime, he's also facing two domestic violence related charges. Those are set for a hearing in May. He pled not guilty to both of those. It's unclear if those have any connection to the murder case. And that was Mel Meyer reporting. Well, switching gears now, a $30 million bond for Maine trails is one step closer to getting on November's ballot. On Friday evening, the Appropriations and Financial Affairs Committee unanimously voted to send the initiative to a full vote of the legislature. Advocates have been pushing for lawmakers to send the initiative to voters and say the influx of money will help almost every industry in the state. Because we've never had a trails bond in the state of Maine. We've never invested in our trails. Trails bring a lot of value to our economy, to the quality of life of Maine people, and the time has come when people recognize we could get even more value, more for our economy, more for our public health, get kids back out into the outdoors, create opportunities for seniors to have trails that are accessible nearby. Both chambers in the legislature would have to approve the initiative by a two-thirds majority in order for the question to appear on the November ballot. Augusta city leaders are getting a lot of complaints about harassing, intimidating behavior from people soliciting money. Brad Rogers looks at one proposed solution and why some city councilors are against it. This young man soliciting money on Western Avenue in Augusta says he's seen the aggressive behavior of other panhandlers and is dead set against it. Augusta city councilors say for months they've been getting complaints about this. There's one thing somebody coming up, can you spare? a dollar please because I haven't had a meal but this has become a lot more aggressive. This coffee shop on Water Street says some solicitors are opening car doors for people demanding money and it's scaring some customers away. It, it already has hurt businesses. Uh, we've had one business owner leave. But there's no question that um, the downtown has been vocal about it. Mayor Mark O'Brien says with the backlog of cases, prosecutors are reluctant to take on misdemeanors like aggressive panhandling. One counselor has proposed a new ordinance to make it illegal to engage in, quote, unreasonable solicitation with a $100 fine to deter the behavior. One of the counselors basically took the Bangor ordinance and kind of adopted that or is proposing that based on that model with the idea that it's been in effect for some period of time and uh, at least hasn't been challenged successfully. 
At least three city councilors are concerned that such an ordinance would violate the First Amendment rights of the unhoused. And they say the state already has laws against trespassing, harassment and disorderly conduct that would apply in these situations. Thursday night, the city council plans to discuss and possibly vote on the proposed ordinance, weather permitting. And that was Brad Rogers reporting. Well, winter weather can certainly wreak havoc on roadways, causing potholes and cracks along even the busiest of streets. But that same kind of damage is also inflicted on sidewalks, which creates not only an inconvenience, but a potential hazard to those who use wheelchairs. Our Doug Banks has more. Being able to step over a crack in the road or a pothole, it's just a luxury that a lot of people don't realize I have. 19-year-old K.O. Samimtra has lived in Bangor for eight months, but has dealt with chronic pain, narcolepsy, and more his entire life. I'm what they call an ambulatory wheelchair user, and it just means that I have the ability to stand and walk for short amounts of time. Um, but using a wheelchair is the best option for my health and safety. Ko's trip down State Street to his physical therapy appointments are met with potholes, cracks, and other impediments in the pavement, which are only heightened by changes in the weather. I'm trying to get new a uh, new chair and new tires, but it's, it's a really difficult process. And so in the meantime, I just get trapped inside when it snows. K.O. states he's made two requests to the Public Works Department, one for a damaged sidewalk and another for electrical issues on a nearby intersection crosswalk. The department's director states the sidewalk has been fixed and the crosswalk is still under advisement. There are around 147 miles of sidewalks in Bangor. Combined with a main winter, it's unrealistic to believe every mile will be kept in pristine condition. But a new software system called C-Click Fix could help expedite that process. Would that help the communication between the department and the residents? I'm hoping so. The new system will show those intermediate steps that somebody went out and inspected it, and uh, yes, there is an issue. Another person was dispatched out and, and addressed the pothole. When we make things accessible for the people who need it the most, life becomes better for literally everyone. In Bangor, Doug Banks, ABC7, and Fox 22 News. Certainly an important perspective to keep in mind, maybe something that you know many of us don't think about, but some of us live with. Absolutely, and I think a, an app or software like that uh, that's being proposed could really be helpful yeah. for roadways and sidewalks. You know, yeah. uh, it would allow people to, to report issues on both fronts. Yeah, it certainly seems like a step in the right direction. I think so. As far as the forecast, well, I'm not really sure you'd call it a step in the right <laughs> direction, but yeah. if you were hoping for more snow, well, well yeah, it's coming. Let's, yeah. let's get a first check of our forecast. <laughs> All right, Beth, uh, look what we did today. High temperatures back up near 50. It felt pretty nice outside. Lots of cloud cover around. But overall, tomorrow, same story. And then some big changes on Wednesday. All right, so there could be a few sprinkles and flurries out there tonight. This will not be a big deal. It looks impressive on radar. It won't be a big deal down here at the surface. Overall, though, the bigger deal gets in here later tomorrow night, but more so on Wednesday into Thursday. This system here, it's a doozy. It's going to bring us a lot of moisture and a lot of wind. And with cooler temperatures locked in place as well. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, a lot of snow across our area once again. Already, winter storm watches are posted for most locations. Uh, more on this during main weather. But overall, a pretty big storm system is on the way. Our forecast then for tonight, though, is mostly cloudy skies. A couple of sprinkles and flurries can't be ruled out with low temperatures in the 30s. Your full forecast is coming up. Beth? Thank you, Jeff. Of course, lots of folks anxious to hear about that storm system that's coming. Indeed, and we'll have those details in our full five day forecast ahead, but still to come on Fox 22 News at 10. If you're a hunting and fishing enthusiast, today was a big day for you. We'll have details. And Governor Mills visits Orono to promote visitation to Maine during the upcoming solar eclipse. We'll have those stories and more local news when we come right back. Roto-Rooter has served the greater Bangor area and beyond for 35 years offering plumbing, hydrojetting, snaking, descaling, video inspection, and grease interceptor cleaning services. For all your residential and commercial clogs, call Roto-Rooter today, 990-1234. And away go troubles down the drain, Roto-Rooter. 
If you have moderate to severe ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, put it in check with Renvoke, a once daily pill. When symptoms tried to take control, I got rapid relief and reduced fatigue with Renvoke. Check. When flares kept trying to slow me down, I got lasting steroid free remission with Renvoke. Check. And when my doctor saw damage, Renvoke helped visibly reduce damage of the intestinal lining. Check. For both UC and Crohn's, rapid symptom relief, lasting steroid free remission, and visibly reduced damage. Check, check, and check. Renvoke can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB, serious infections and blood clots, some fatal, cancers, including lymphoma and skin, heart attack, stroke, and GI tears occurred. People 50 and older with a heart disease risk factor have an increased risk of death. Serious allergic reactions can occur. Tell your doctor if you are or may become pregnant. Put UC and Crohn's in check and keep them there with Renvoke. Ask your gastroenterologist about Renvoke and learn how AbbVie can help you save. Welcome to 207 Wellness, where transformation begins from within. Embark on a journey of self-betterment with our comprehensive services from weight management to IV hydration, vitamin supplementation, and neurotoxin injections. 207 Wellness is here to support your wellness goals. Take the first step toward a healthier, happier you, rejuvenate your body, refresh your mind, and reclaim your vitality with 207 Wellness. Transform your wellness, transform your life. Give us a call today. I'm just the cleaning lady. She's clearly much more than that. The Cleaning Lady, all new Tuesdays on Fox. You can join Fox 22 and ABC7 online at foxbangor.com. Be a part of the conversation on Twitter and join our Facebook family at Fox ABC Maine. Follow, like, watch. Download the new Fox Bangor app from the App Store or Google Play and get your news anytime, anywhere. One week from today, the moon will completely block the face of the sun, creating a total solar eclipse. Parts of Maine are expected to be some of the best places in the world to witness complete totality. And Governor Mills was in Orono today to share safety tips and promote Maine as a premier eclipse destination. Our Grace Blanchard has more. Maine will once again have the best seats in the house for a historic total eclipse of the sun. On April 8th, more than half of Maine will be able to see the eclipse in full totality for more than three minutes. Governor Mills says her administration has been preparing for the event since last year. We expect tens of thousands of people to travel to Maine to enjoy this incredible event, and we couldn't be more excited to welcome them. The Maine Department of Transportation is urging people to be prepared for congested roads and to be mindful of Maine weather. This is mud season in Maine. And uh, if you don't know the road and haven't been on it several times already at this time of year, don't go on it. Officials from the Maine Emergency Management Agency suggest people pack paper maps as they expect cell towers to be overwhelmed. Traffic management plans, we have fuel shortage plans, so we have all these plans that we look at whenever there's an event like this to make sure that every base has been covered. The governor also stressed the importance of enjoying the spectacle safely. Regular sunglasses just won't cut it. Eclipse glasses block the sun's radiation from reaching your eyes and causing permanent damage. For more safety tips, visit our website, foxbangor.com. In Orno, Grace Blanchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. The Orono Town Council invited members of CSX Railroad tonight to speak on the projects the company is actively working on in the community and to hear residents' concerns. CSX acquired Pan Am Railways in June of 2022 and has since committed to investing $100 million to improve the old Pan Am track that runs from Maine to Rotterdam Junction, New York. According to members of CSX, the company has replaced 47,000 railroad ties and resurfaced nearly 55 miles of track. Members of CSX spoke on some of the upgrades and changes they've made to the tracks in Orono, including adding LED lights and upgrading the signals at railroad crossings. They also mentioned that speeds of trains will increase, though, over time. Orono residents shared their concerns on the issues they've seen, specifically on how rain affects railroads. Is the drainage going to be fixed? And if you can't answer that tonight, I'd like an answer within a week. I've been watching this railroad deteriorate for years, and the work that's gone into it has been really good. Um, and the trains are running much 
cleaner, truer. They don't rock back and forth. Well, the council and CSX personnel say they will be exploring these concerns at future council meetings. Maine is known for its vast outdoor recreation, and for those who love to fish and hunt, today was a very big day. April 1st kicks off the first day of open water fishing in lakes and ponds. According to the Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife, many bodies of water are closed to all fishing for months to help protect and preserve certain populations of fish, like the native wild brook trout. It's also a big day for moose hunters, as Mainers can now submit applications for a moose permit through the state's lottery. According to the department, they're expecting more than 60,000 people to apply for the just 4,000 available moose permits. April 1st still holds a special part for hunters and anglers, particularly fishermen. They know that's really kind of the start to the season. It's when they can start keeping fish. And also, if you love to hunt, you know you need to apply for your moose hunting permit, and you can start doing that on April 1st. According to Lottie, there are 360,000 licensed fishermen in Maine. He says both the hunting and fishing industry are huge economic drivers for the state. Applications for the moose permit and fishing licenses are both available online. For more information, you can visit our website, foxbangor.com. And I think the thought of fishing sounds pretty great to a lot of people right now. However, <laughs> I don't know if it, Probably many people are going Probably not going to get a lot of that yeah, in this week. Not this week. Unfortunately. Yeah. Well, coming up on the 10 p.m. news on Fox 22, police arrest the driver of a vehicle that crashed into an FBI office in Georgia. And new evidence suggests Russia could be behind a mysterious and seemingly targeted condition known as Havana Syndrome. Those stories and more as the 10 p.m. news on Fox 22 continues. Looking for fitness that fits your budget? Join Planet Fitness. Now through April 12th, save $5 a month when you join for $1 down and just $10 a month. Cancel any time. That's a savings of $60 per year. Get big fitness energy without the big investment. Never intimidating. Always free fitness training. Equipment for every workout. Don't miss out. Join the Judgment Free Zone today and get energized for $1 down, $10 a month. Cancel any time. Deal ends Friday, April 12th. If you're taking an antidepressant, but you're still masking your depression, you could be experiencing a partial response to your antidepressant. Partial response happens when your antidepressant alone isn't enough. Let's try adding Rexulti. When added to an antidepressant, Rexulti significantly reduced depression symptoms more than an antidepressant alone. So you can build on your progress. Rexulti can cause serious side effects. Elderly dementia patients have an increased risk of death or stroke. Antidepressants may increase suicidal thoughts and actions and worsen depression in children and young adults. Report new or sudden changes in mood, behavior, thoughts, or feelings, or if you develop suicidal thoughts or actions. Report fever, stiff muscles, and confusion, which can be life-threatening, or uncontrolled muscle movements, which may be permanent. High blood sugar, which can lead to coma or death. Weight gain, increased cholesterol, low white blood cells, unusual urges, dizziness on standing, falls, seizures, trouble swallowing, or sleepiness may occur. Ask your doctor about Rex Salty. Protect your vehicle from rusting away with Bell's Automotive Protection. We are the leader in mobile undercoating and rust proofing in Maine. We'll travel right to your driveway using the best and safest products on the market. This is much safer than rubberized coatings that can cause damage later on. We spray all types of vehicles including commercial fleets. We all know vehicles aren't cheap anymore. Don't let the harsh winter chemicals eat them away. Call us or visit our page for a free quote. 207-659-3805. On April 8th, Maine will experience a total solar eclipse. ABC7 and Fox 22 will have team coverage throughout the day from Holton, Jackman, Millinocket, and Lincoln and have a live special on ABC7 from 2 to 4 p.m. as the path of totality moves across our state. ABC7 and Fox 22 is your home for the Maine eclipse. Eclipse coverage sponsored by Washington County Community College. Discover choices, create success. You're watching Fox 22, Bangor. Police arrested a man for crashing a car into the entrance of an FBI office near Atlanta. Investigators are now trying to figure out why he did it. Fox's Connor Hansen has more. A man crashed his orange SUV into the barrier at this FBI office near Atlanta. An FBI spokesperson says the suspect tried to follow the car in front of him before colliding with the barrier. 
The man was quickly surrounded by large tactical vehicles. Agents in the car in front of him, who were leaving the complex for lunch, stopped the man from running into the grounds on foot. He tried to follow in and tried getting into the gate, but our security uh, precautions prevented him from getting in. The FBI says the man was taken to the hospital for a mental evaluation and there were no injuries to anyone involved. He was not associated with this facility. Several of our special agents who were passing by apprehended him. His motives at this point are not known. The motive remains unclear, but investigators do not believe it was connected to terrorism. FBI bomb techs using a robot checked out the car as a precaution before it was towed away. Local police were called to arrest the suspect. While the crash was unexpected, agents on the scene said this is something they have prepared for. We actually trained for this type of situation. We recently did have training to prevent this that we, that we uh, have done before. The FBI says the incident is currently under investigation and the suspect is facing both state and federal charges. In New York, Connor Hansen, Fox News. From the top down, government officials say they need to work as quickly as possible to reopen the port of Baltimore after the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed. President Biden plans to visit the site this week. Fox's Connor Hansen again with that story. Days after one of Baltimore's iconic bridges came crashing down into one of the country's most vital shipping lanes, it's still unclear how long it will take to reopen the channel. Two massive cranes are being brought in to lift tons of steel and debris out of Baltimore Harbor. A portion of the bridge beneath the water has been described by, uni by unified command as chaotic wreckage. President Biden has vowed federal support and plans to visit the site of the collapsed bridge Friday. We are going to do everything that we can uh, to make sure that that bridge gets back up. So far, the Department of Transportation has allocated $60 million to get cleanup efforts started. The White House has been talking to the state of Maryland about how much the entire project will cost and how much more will be needed from Congress. I also spoke with the Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, over the weekend who understands the significance of this. In the meantime, hundreds of ships are being rerouted. I'm proud to announce that we do in fact have an 11 foot channel now just to the north. And thousands of workers at the closed port are unsure about their future employment. Is to do everything that we can to make sure that, uh, that, that, that we mitigate um, the anxiety and the harms of this moment, including um, the economic security of workers. It's still unclear how long it could take to build a new bridge. The Francis Scott Key Bridge took about five years to build in the 1970s. In New York, Connor Hansen, Fox News. An airstrike hit Iran's consular building in Syria on Monday, according to Syrian state media. It comes following increased tensions between Israel and Iranian-backed proxies in the region. Fox's Trey Yanks has the story. A massive airstrike targeting a facility linked to Iran's embassy in Syria on Monday. Iranian state media is blaming Israel for the attack, which reportedly killed one of Tehran's top military commanders, who played a key role in supplying weapons to the Lebanese militant group Hezbollah. Several Iranian diplomats also reportedly died. Israel has not commented on the attack, but airstrikes like this have become more common following Hamas's October attack on Israel and cross-border clashes on the Israel-Lebanon border. Of course, we are worried about escalation. We are do worried about anything that would cause the conflict to, to expand or widen in any way. Back in Gaza, Israeli forces withdrew from the territory's largest hospital on Monday. During the two-week raid on al-Shifa, the IDF says it killed some 200 Hamas militants and obtained weapons and intelligence. Shifa has become a central terrorist headquarters for Hamas. Our forces' surprise action was carried out with precision. U.S. officials tell Fox News Secretary of State Antony Blinken, along with other U.S. and Israeli officials, are meeting virtually to discuss Israel's plans for the next stage of the war, an offensive in the city of Rafah. It comes as Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu faces growing pressure from protesters in Jerusalem to reach a ceasefire deal and hold early elections. If he's not uh, changed, and again, if uh, good leaders or a new coalition is not taking over, we are doomed. 
Netanyahu is rejecting calls for early elections, saying it would disrupt the war efforts. In Tel Aviv, Trey Yankst, Fox News. There is new evidence that Russia may be behind a mysterious traumatic brain condition affecting hundreds of Americans serving abroad. Fox's chief national security correspondent Jennifer Griffin has an update on the possible origin of what's known as Havana syndrome. Essentially, this is an act of war. In an explosive new report, 60 Minutes, The Insider and Der Spiegel found new evidence that hundreds of U.S. government employees complaining of sudden neurological symptoms known as Havana syndrome may have been attacked by Russia with a weapon using directed energy. It was like a high-pitched metallic drilling noise and it knocked me forward, immediately felt pressure, and pressure and pain started coursing from inside my right ear, down my jaw, down my neck, and into my chest. One of the things I started to notice was the caliber of our officer that was being impacted. There was some angle where they had worked against Russia, focused on Russia, and done extremely well. Pull over! Pull over! This car chase near Key West four years ago provided key evidence, handwritten notes of bank accounts, a device that can erase the car's computer data, and the driver's Russian passport. Receipts link the suspected attackers to a Russian military intelligence hit squad, GRU Unit 29155. Certain Russians were in the exact vicinity of attacks in particular countries. Victims like Adam, who uses an alias and was thought to be patient zero after experiencing crippling auditory sensation that left him unable to walk or move while working undercover in Havana in 2016, responded with relief. They had pulled out receipts from the GRU 29155 group, which explicitly outlines that these are weapon systems and a weapons program. For years, he and other victims have felt gaslit by their former agency employers. The intelligence community's broad assessment that a foreign adversary is, is unlikely to be responsible for these incidents. The Pentagon has now confirmed a senior U.S. Defense Department official sought medical treatment for symptoms of Havana syndrome at NATO's Vilnius summit last summer. At the Pentagon, Jennifer Griffin, Fox News. And still to come on Fox 22 News at 10, the White House welcomes scores of children for the annual Easter egg roll. Brewer and in sports, Brewer baseball is back after a 14-2 season last year. And they've got a brand new home field, too. We'll be right back. We started it up to 11. It's nonstop mass mania. Seven, oh! yes! <laughs> All new Mask Singer, Wednesdays on Fox. Comfort Shoes and More is your destination for all of your spring and summer footwear essentials. We have trained pedorthists on site, and our friendly, caring, and knowledgeable staff will make sure you are fitted with the proper footwear that is perfect for you. The OrthoFeed hands-free sneaker is engineered for comfort. We have many new sandal styles from Hoka, Peba, PowerStep, Stride, and more. Come visit Comfort Shoes and More in Newport to find the perfect shoes for you. Transform your surroundings with Paramount Paving located in Bangor. They are your paving and seal coating experts. Whether it's residential maintenance to full commercial projects, Paramount Paving delivers quality that lasts. Book before June 1st and enjoy a $250 Visa gift card upon completion of your next paving project. Call us today at 602-8931 or visit us at ParamountPavingLLC.com. Paramount Paving, setting the standard for excellence. When it comes to paving, we are Paramount. Finding the right vehicle for you and your family can be a daunting task. At Varney Buick GMC, our expert staff is here to make the journey as painless as possible. Our goal is to get you and your family in a vehicle that will best fit into your lifestyle. Communication is key, and our team makes sure to be completely transparent throughout the process, informing you on all of your options. Come experience Varney value only at Varney Buick GMC. Tired of your internet service constantly letting you down? Those other providers may promise the world with their flashy advertisements, but are you truly having a good customer experience? Fear not, because there's a new player in town. Introducing GoNet Speed. No more endless hold times or automated responses. We're here to listen, support, and provide you with the exceptional service you deserve. Our fast, reliable fiber internet, it's mind-blowing. 
let us show you what true internet satisfaction feels like. Introducing Hood New England Creamery. Made with premium Hood milk and cream and overloaded with the good stuff. New England Creamery. From Hood for New England. Try all 10 flavors. Animal control has arrived. Sir, you can't park that here. We're with the city. Fashion police. We got a call regarding your pants. Whoa. And you can watch it anytime on Hulu. Hi. Yeah, you can come on over. All new Animal Control. Wednesdays on Fox. Next day, Hulu. Tens of thousands of people and eggs filled the White House lawn the day after Easter for the annual egg roll. Fox's Peter Ducey has details. An estimated 40,000 people joining in Monday's Easter egg roll at the White House. Little ones scrambled to roll their eggs over the finish line using spoons without cracking under pressure. This year's theme, egg vacation. Folks, welcome to what's expected to be the biggest White House Easter egg roll ever. The South Lawn is transforming into our learning playground and school community. President Biden emphasizing the importance of grace and hope the day after the Christian holiday. It's time to pray for one another. The president also proclaimed March 31st Transgender Day of Visibility. House Speaker Mike Johnson slammed the move, posting on X, quote, the Biden White House has betrayed the central tenet of Easter, which is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre, joined by the Easter Bunny on Monday, pushing back on the criticism. Easter falls on different Sundays, right, every year. And this year it happened to coincide with trans, uh, Transgender Visibility Day. And as a Christian uh, who celebrates Easter with family, President Biden stands for bringing people together and upholding the dignity and freedoms of every American. 64,000 eggs were donated to this year's egg roll, and another 64,000 were donated to a D.C. food bank. At the White House, Peter Ducey, Fox News. Cicada season comes around once every 13 to 17 years, but this summer, an unusual double dose is about to hit. First in the South and then in Illinois and its neighbors, Fox's Dana Marie McNichol has more. It's like an entire alien species living underneath our feet. They're some of nature's most resilient creatures. And then some prime number of years, they come out to say hello. Periodical cicadas, the kind that emerge every 13 to 17 years, are expected to start showing up in just a few weeks. But this time, there could be more than we can handle. A rare double dose of the bug that can sing as loud as jet engines is about to hit the south, then move north to the Midwest, all thanks to a combination of two separate types of cicadas that haven't bred at the same time since 1803. This year, we're going to get two broods that are going to emerge at the same time. Multiply by 100, 1,000, we're going to get trillions of these amazing living organisms come out of the earth. And it's already underway. Scientists have been observing boreholes created through the southeast, meaning the cicadas are preparing to emerge. They usually leave their underground hiding places when the ground heats up to 64 degrees. And that's happening a bit earlier this year because of climate change. Good news. They're annoying, but not harmful. And experts are ready to collect a treasure trove of valuable information when the double dose ramps up. I think we get to appreciate, you know, this fragile planet we cohabitat with uh, so many beautiful uh, systems, small, but lo lot in number and, uh, you know, so much we don't know yet. As for how many cicadas we'll see this year, it's hard to predict, but some experts say that number could be in the quadrillions. In Miami, Dana Marie McNichol, Fox News. Quadrillions, that just doesn't sound right. Yeah, that word is resonating in my head right now, and <laughs> yeah. I can't say that I'm happy about it. Yeah, no, me neither. <laughs> I'm glad there's a little distance between us and the, the double dose. Yeah. Yikes. Well, it sounds like uh, we have other things to be concerned about. Maybe not concerned. Like a double dose of spring snow? Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah, that's coming. Yep, coming right. up. Uh, stay tuned for your details. <laughs> High temperatures back up near 50 again today. Tomorrow, same story before increasing clouds. Tomorrow night gives us a pretty good chance for a pretty good snow Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Details on that when I come back. Comfy. 
cozy, relaxing. Not Joe. Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find rockers, recliners, sofas, and easy chairs. Quality furniture, affordable prices. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. I love my Mitsubishi electric heat pumps from Dave's World. This particular system has six interior heads supported by two outdoor units. With the price of oil, we were trying to shoulder that cost with an electric option. I chose to work with Dave's World based on the reliability of the organization and their professionalism throughout my entire process with them. Dave's World service and customer care has been exceptional, both before installation and post installation. I would absolutely recommend Mitsubishi Electric Heat Pumps and Dave's World for heating and cooling in your home. Dave's World, awesome. Family owned and operating in the Bangor area for more than 10 years, Crosby's Welding is here to help you. We specialize in steel, stainless steel, and aluminum welding and fabrication. We serve many of the local industries from Maine Lobstermen to the commercial trucking industry and everything in between. Fully mobile on-site construction services right down to custom signs and fire pits. Fast, friendly, reliable service. Give us a call today for a free estimate. 974-7815. Hood Milk and You. That's why we do what we do. Day in and day out. Making milk you can trust. With no artificial growth hormones. And we protect Hood Milk with our light block bottle. We care about our milk because we know how much you care about what you give your family. So you can feel good about Hood. Durable, sturdy, stylish. Not Joe. Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find solid wood, built to last, made in main dressers, bureaus, and nightstands. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. This is going to be the toughest next level chef yet. I want my mom. Only the best will survive. All new next level chef, Thursdays at 8, 7 central on Fox. Here we go. Your full weather is brought by Big Pine Painting, the number one family-owned and operated painting company serving Bangor and Belfast and surrounding areas. For all your paint, drywall, and pressure washing needs, call today for your free estimate. Okay, so here we go. Keep in mind, one week from today is the total solar eclipse, and we have a lot to get through before then, but overall, here's the path of this thing. And right now, the cloud cover forecast would say mostly clear skies across our area a week from today. Keep in mind, though, this is a week from today, and the forecast can change. Overall, though, here we go. In the past, historically, uh, on Monday's data week from today, it's been anything from mostly cloudy to mostly sunny. So overall, you get the idea. Uh, uh, roll the dice right. But overall, right now looks pretty good for us a week from today, cloud cover wise. Out there today, temperature wise, 52 here in Bangor, 48 for Bar Harbor. Well, we'll take it. It felt like spring, a couple of sprinkles out there as well. But we have quite a weather system on the way for us for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Until then, though, the long range outlook now for temperatures shows well above average temperatures for us pretty much through the middle portions of April. And then beyond that, the spring outlook is out as well, keeping the Midwest and the Great Lakes and us above average in temperatures. This is your tax dollars at work, NOAA, the National Weather Service saying, hey, above average temperatures through April, May, and June. All right, so some sprinkles and flurries out there tonight. This will not be a big deal. I know it looks impressive on radar. It's not, though. Uh, the sprinkles, though, are, can't be ruled out at all. And then behind that, a pretty nice day for us for tomorrow before our next weather system gets in here. And here it is, the west of us. That is moving our direction. Lots of energy, lots of moisture, and then lots of snowfall potentially for our region. So tonight, no issues at all. Here's tomorrow morning looking pretty good, but then increasing clouds throughout the day tomorrow. A mostly cloudy day for us on Wednesday, but then here we go. So Thursday morning, about 1 o'clock in the morning, snow overspreading the entire area up until the coast as well, uh, down east areas too, and then snow into Thursday afternoon, snow into Thursday evening, changing back over to some rain and snow mix on a late Late Thursday night and then ending as some more rain and snow most likely on Friday. This is quite the event on the way and it could look something like this snowfall wise. Uh, this is going to change a bit but you get the idea areas north and west of Bangor could see close to a foot of snow once again from this system already. Winter storm watches are posted for parts of the area. This will likely be expanded in some capacity tomorrow. We have quite a weather system on the way. Our forecast for tonight though is lots of clouds out there. A couple 
couple sprinkles and a few flurries. Look for low temperatures down near 30. For tomorrow, all right, partly cloudy. Highs back up near 50 again. The calm before the storm with a north breeze around 5 to 10. And then looking ahead, your five-day forecast shows tomorrow. Very nice day. And then Wednesday, the rain snow gets here, changing over to all snow Wednesday night. All snow on Thursday, potentially heavy. Rain snow mix into Friday, potentially heavy. But here's the weekend looking pretty good Saturday into Sunday with high temperatures near 40. All right, yeah. so a significant amount of snow on the way. Yes, yeah, so if you didn't pull a muscle shoveling the snow or snow blowing, then the weekend there'll be plenty of sun to do stuff. <laughs> exactly. All right, well, Good that's times. one way to look at it, yeah, too. Yeah, always positive. All right, stay with us. Sports <laughs> is coming up next. Are your basement walls bowing, crumbling, or failing? Hi, I'm Tony Hafford with TC Hafford Basement Systems. All things basementy. Our stable lock wall system offers a patented, affordable, and permanent solution to save your foundation walls. It stabilizes, fills voids, and structurally repairs, leaving a new smooth surface. All the strength of new walls. Call TC Hafford Basement Systems today for all things basementy. Great Scott! This is Green Bear 420 in 2010. What kind of trip is this? I gotta get back to 2023. Wait, it's 2015. So much has changed. In 2023, we had a lot more glass, t-shirts, and novelties. It's gonna take a bolt of lightning to get me home. Finally, home at last. Now Green Bear 420, Green Bear Green Care is bigger and better than ever. To be continued. I've been with US Cellular for years now, and I think I'm their biggest fan. So they asked me to tell you about their special customer event, Us Days. Us Days means exclusive deals just for us customers, like up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. So I said, if I'm going to be on TV, do you think I can get hair and makeup? And I even got a manicure, too. Introducing Us Days at U.S. Cellular. Exclusive offers just for our customers. Get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. <laughs> when it comes to the feud... Name a way a woman might say she likes her men and her cheese. You either nail it. Sharp. Spicy. Or fail it. Full of adventure. When you're at the grocery store, you want to find some adventurous cheese. <laughs> running around the dairy section. Family Feud. Where are you going? Stop all this adventure. Weeknights at 7 on Fox 22. Tonight Sports is brought to you by Healing Hands Massage in Hamden, providing professional massage services tailored specifically for their clients. Stop by Healing Hands Massage today. You'll thank yourself later. Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. Let's start in the baseball diamond. Over in Brewer, the Witches are gearing up for the season a year after going 14-2 and and finishing a top Class A North. And this year, they will actually play their home games in Brewer. The Witches outside for practice on Monday for the first time ever on the brand-new Hederick Field. It's an all-turf complex that's going to benefit all sports, including lacrosse and field hockey and soccer, you name it. For baseball, though, they've had just one home game in Brewer in the last three years. That's different from those other sports. In just over two weeks, on April 18th, they will open the season at home against Oxford Hills, and the team and the community are just chomping at the bit to get there. We've always had a great atmosphere at this field, and... Um... You know, I mean, I'm sure the guys are going to be like me. I've been around baseball for a long time. Just the first day that we play an actual real game, the carnival game on our field, I mean, everybody's just going to be bursting to get going. Um, when I was a freshman, we heard that we were going to get turf, and now that we finally have it, it's, it's such a blessing, and it's an awesome opportunity, and it's going to be a really fun year for my senior year just because turf is really fun, especially up here with all the snow and rain. As for the Witches, they have a lot of experience coming back from that team that went 14-2 last year and finished in first place. They were upset in the first round by eventual Northern Maine champs Edward Little, so looking to get back there. A lot of their pitching rotation and bullpen have a ton of experience as well, including senior Vanetta Stein, and they are excited for the opportunity to string some wins together once again. I think we're going to have a great pitching staff. We also have some um, new bats that came in that got stronger compared to last year, so we're really um, excited and 
can't wait for this opportunity. All right, let's move to the hockey rink now up at the Alphonse. Season ending this past Thursday, the offseason is underway, and a few of the questions around some of the fourth-year guys who have an extra year of eligibility have now been answered. Go goalie Connor Androlowicz is now in the transfer portal for his remaining year of eligibility, and news coming out on Monday about forward Donovan Houle, too. After a good four years here at Maine, the forward out of Montreal is going pro, signing an amateur tryout agreement or an ATO with the San Jose Barracudas, the AHL affiliate of the San Jose Sharks. Houle was an essential part of all three of Ben Barr's teams here at Maine, setting the culture, rebuilding the program. He set career highs this year with 24 points, 15 assists, and 88 shots on goal. He assisted on Maine's lone goal in the NCAA tournament game on Thursday, wishing him the best of luck in his career. All right, let's stay with some hockey now. The Boston Bruins will be in Nashville on Tuesday night to face off against the Predators. The Bees have just seven games left in the regular season before the postseason gets underway. Right now, the Bruins three points behind the Rangers for the top seed in the East, and the Bees may be getting a jolt added to their lineup soon. Veteran forward Pat Maroon, who was added to the Bees roster at the trade deadline, is coming back from back surgery. He skated with the team on Monday and hopes to play in a few games before the playoffs roll around. Maroon, who's won Stanley Cups with St. Louis against Boston and Tampa, says he is elated to be a Bruin. Just putting on that practice jersey, original six team, I mean, um, you know, this is a team that a lot of people want to play for, and, and I'm just excited to get get with the guys and, you know, get in the lineup with them and, you know, go to battle with them. And we have a great, great group here, great group of guys. We're a good hockey team, and, um, you know, I want to be a part of it as soon as possible here. All right, staying with the hockey now. For the first time ever, a Maine girls all-star hockey team will be competing at the Tier 1 National Championships in Tampa, Florida this week. The Casco Bay Mariners, a U14 team, defeated Mid-Fairfield, Connecticut to win New England's and advance to Nationals. Maine will now play Minnesota, Michigan, and Wisconsin teams in pool play first. It is a tall order for the young ladies from Maine, but the Mariners feel confident they can not only compete, but win. So, I mean, this group of girls has been together largely since they were eight years old. And um, we've added some players along the way. And we had, we've had some real, Casco's had some great success at the tier two level. And we just kind of felt this year would be a good opportunity to try to dip our toe into the tier one level. And we ended up winning the New England Regional Tournament. And, and, and you know, we played in, you know, arguably the toughest division in the entire country in the New England Girls Hockey League. And, you know, we took our lumps and, and we learned some things and, and we kind of were peaking at the right time and we won the New England Regionals. So now we get to go to the Tier 1 Nationals. This has been so much fun. Like, I've been playing with these girls since I was, like, around four. So we've never been able to do something like this and we're the first team from Maine to be able to play at this high of a level. So it's been really exciting and we've had a blast, too. So. All right, wishing them luck. That is all the time we have for sports. We'll be right back after the break. Behind every keepsake, there's a memory. Behind every photo, there's a story. Behind Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration, there's people giving back by bringing back what was thought to be lost. The details, the time, and the expertise, all packaged up behind a name that Mainers have trusted for over 35 years. Statewide commercial and residential services. Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. You keep the memories, we'll handle the rest. Hanks Husqvarna is your full-line Husqvarna dealer with two convenient locations, 32 Old State Road in Carmel and 19 Moosehead Trail in Newport. Whether it's tractors and zero turns, chainsaws to trimmers, or pressure washers to battery power, everything is set up, serviced, and ready to go by our certified Husqvarna technician. And all sales are backed by our in-house Husqvarna warranty. For parts, service, or sales, stop in to Hanks Husqvarna, Carmel, or Newport. If you have moderate to severe ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, put it in check with Renfoke, a once daily pill. When symptoms tried to take control, I got rapid relief and reduced fatigue with Renvoke. Check. When flares kept trying to slow me down, I got lasting steroid-free remission with Renvoke. Check. And when my doctor saw damage, Renvoke helped visibly reduce damage of the intestinal lining. Check. For both UC and Crohn's, rapid symptom relief, lasting steroid-free remission. And visibly reduced damage. Check, check, and check. 
Rinvoke can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB, serious infections and blood clots, some fatal, cancers, including lymphoma and skin, heart attack, stroke, and GI tears occurred. People 50 and older with a heart disease risk factor have an increased risk of death. Serious allergic reactions can occur. Tell your doctor if you are or may become pregnant. Put UC and Crohn's in check and keep them there with Rinvoke. Ask your gastroenterologist about Rinvoke and learn how AbbVie can help you save. At Hood, our love for New England inspired New England Creamery. We make it with premium Hood milk and cream, then we overload it with the good stuff. Like Green Mountain Mint Chip with a rich, fudgy swirl. Main Sweet Blueberry with real, delicious blueberries. And Cape Cod Fudge Shop, packed with fudgy truffles. Hood's New England Creamery, from Hood, for New England. Try all 10 flavors. Four single farmers saddle up to find lifelong love. <laughs> we had a fire going, and that wasn't the only spark. <laughs> An all-new Farmer Once a Wife, Thursdays on Fox. Welcome back. And finally tonight, horses found in less than ideal living conditions are getting a new lease on life thanks to a rescue and rehabilitation center in Wyndham. As Jody Hersey tells us, the Maine State Society for the Protection of Animal works, Animals works day and night to provide food, shelter and veterinary care for these horses until they can be rehomed. The horses that are here really are horses who have fallen through the cracks for a variety of reasons. When horses are neglected, abused, or found to be living in unfavorable conditions, law enforcement and local animal control officers will bring them here to the Maine State Society for the Protection of Animals in Wyndham. So we rescue, rehabilitate, and ideally rehome horses, donkeys, and mules. Horses just like this quarter horse cross named Cherry. At the time she came in, her feet were overgrown. She had no boots, no shoes, no support for her feet, so she was having a really hard time walking. Jeff Greenleaf is the operations manager at the MSSPA. I don't like the horses when I'm picking them up, seeing the situations they come from, but knowing that they're coming here and getting everything they need, that's the best part of the job. This nonprofit, which receives no state funding, provides food, shelter, and all the veterinary services these animals need as they convalesce and heal. So when they come here, um, we like to think that their luck changes. Three of the horses from the Maine State Society for the Protection of Animals are now living here in Orrington at Raining Hope Ranch. This is the new home for Trip, Amir, and Leo. The participants have they, they love them all. Raining Hope Ranch provides equine assisted therapy to adults and children with diverse backgrounds. I hadn't anticipated when I started this organization to be using rescue horses so much. It has provided a, an unexpected benefit to both the horses and the participants in our program because there's so much relatability between their paths. However, not all the horses treated at the MSSPA can be adopted or rehomed. When that occurs, the animals are allowed to live permanently at the MSSPA for the remainder of their days. In Wyndham, I'm Jody Hersey for ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. And a wonderful place there. Yeah, great story. Good night, everybody. Good night.